all, all biblical, you know, everything what the Bible says about uh, how we ought to run things here on earth. Because, you know, the Bible gives us the answers to, to everything that we need to know. The Bible gives us instruction and wisdom on how we ought to live, how we ought to walk, how we ought to do things. And if you think about it, you know, um, where else would you want to turn to? If you think about just human government, right? How are we governed? How is it that, what type of laws should we have in place? This all fundamentally goes to what's right and what's wrong and what's so bad it needs to be punished. You know, can, can you think of anything else that would not, you know, that, that would fall under God's realm and, and, and God's supervision and God's instruction more than just laws? I mean, you've got the whole test, the Old Testament is known as like the law. You know, I mean, definitely the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses are known as the law of God. But really, when you're thinking about the entire Old Testament, you're referring to, you know, the time of the law. And that is the majority of the Bible. And what's, what's fascinating to me is how many modern day Christians just completely are ignorant of, you know, the concept of going to God's word to determine what our laws should be and how we ought to run our, you know, the government and the, and the, the, you know, the place that we live in. See, people have been brainwashed into thinking that, oh no, you know, they use a separation of church and state saying that, you know, well, you can't, you know, the Bible should have nothing to do with government at all, and you should have no, you know, and, and this is just completely separate, and they need to be completely different. No, the, the, the purpose of the separation of the church and state was to not force a religion on everybody, right? Not to have a state religion that just forces everyone to believe a certain way. That was the concept here, and they, they, they abuse what that even is about to try to deceive Christians into thinking that, Oh, well, the Bible should have no place in government. Well, I beg to differ. God's word should have everything to do with our government, with, with determining morality, with determining judgment and justice and what's right and what's wrong. I mean, isn't God known as the ultimate judge? Isn't God the one that determines what's right and wrong? Well, you know what? That same God has given us an outline and guidelines on how government, human government, ought to be run. He's given us the instruction, and people want to make a cop out and say, oh, the, the, that was just for Israel. That was just for the, you know, it's easy to say, oh, that was just for them. Oh, that was just for Israel. That was just for that time. Look, the truths and the justice stands today as much as it did for Israel. Now, obviously, there are a few areas of the law that have changed. And I'm not going to spend this entire sermon, it's a whole other sermon, a whole other subject of determining what has changed in God's law. But I'll tell you what has not changed. The moral, the morality of like stealing, killing, rape, you know, these types of things, nothing like that has changed. The only things that have changed is in the service to God. The, the things that pertain to the priesthood of Aaron, which is offering of, of animals and sacrifices and meats and drinks and carnal ordinances. Those types of things have changed. No doubt about it. Because the first thing that the people who hate God's law and hate God's word are going to do is say, well, what about eating shellfish? Well, what about you know, wearing mixed fabric? Well, what, you know, just stupidity. Anyone who has any knowledge of the Bible knows that there have been changes made to the law and observance of holy days and things like that. There are things that are very specific, and they are spelled out in the New Testament very clearly that they are changed, that there is a difference now. And none of them have to do with what we would institute in a government anyways. None of those changes would be enforced today. So, you know, when people try to say, oh, that was just for them, look, the priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change of the law also. Because when Jesus Christ, our high priest, came and sacrificed himself and died on the cross and rose again from the dead, that changed. 